Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out the JUSCO. It is a 240 watt hour portable power station from Bouge RV. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. When you receive the JUSCO, you receive a little baggie with some cords. And it looks to be a cigarette lighter adapter to uh, maybe an 8 millimeter plug. And also a, um, a USB-C cable. Uh, let's see, you get a small user's manual right here. And then here is the Bouge RV Juicego. Okay, so fresh out of the box, here's what it looks like. This thing only weighs 6.28 pounds. It is 10.24 inches in length. The depth is 2.6 inches and the height is 6.69 inches. Uh, the battery chemistry is LiPo 4, so this thing has, you know, three, four, five thousand cycles of, uh, of usage in it, which is nice. It's, it also has like this rubber, this rubber coating on the sides, so it's actually very easy to pick up. And it also has this handle, so you can easily carry it. Now on the handle side, you can see that there is a fan and an AC port. So there's one single AC port, and this is rated for 150 watts max. Uh, and then on the other side, we have a light, uh, a power button, uh, an AC button, the light button, uh, the input, which is between 12 and 32 volts. This is where you would plug in your cigarette lighter adapter or your solar panel, uh, or if you had the optional AC adapter, which uh, does not come with the unit. On the out ports, there is a cigarette lighter adapter, which is 130 watts max. Uh, we also have a, uh, a power delivery port right here and it is a hundred watts in and out. Uh, and then there's a, uh, another USB-C port right here, which is a 30 watt max, and a USB-A, which is an 18 watt max. Okay, let's go ahead and turn it on for the first time to see what it does. And when you long press, it turns on the screen, which actually shows this to be 100% capacity which I'm actually surprised about being the LiPo 4 uh, chemistry. I thought this would be shipped to me, you know, between 50 and 70%. Uh, but then the screen, I'm not sure, this is a very small screen. It's only about the size of my thumbnail, but it's actually pretty clear. Okay, the screen shows that it's at 100% capacity. Uh, it shows zero watts. I'm guessing that's zero watts in and zero watts out. And it does show that the DC output is on right now. Okay, you just gotta short press the AC button and the little tiny light turns on right here. And then it does show AC output on the screen right there as well. Uh, and then the light, and it shows high, low, flashing. Ooh, is that SOS? It is SOS. And off. Okay, uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn the AC off. Yep, and you just do a short press to turn it off. Uh, I believe you can just do a short press on here and it turns the screen off. There we go. But the unit is still on on the DC side. And a short press will turn the screen back on. Like I said before, these ports, they have uh, the DC side has a max output of 130 watts. And the AC side has a max output of 150 watts. Also, when it comes to charging, you can charge it at 100 watts from the power delivery. You can charge it from 100 watts of solar, and you can charge it from 100 watts with the cigarette lighter adapter. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and plug this thing in and make sure it's at 100%, and then we're going to do a DC capacity test uh, to see what the actual capacity is. This unit is marketed to say that its capacity is 240 watt hours, so let's go ahead and find out what that is. Uh, these may be regulated, so our capacity may be 10% uh, less. We we'll make it right around 216 watt hours. But let's go ahead and test it and find out what we got. Okay, so the DC capacity test for this Juice Go is done, and let's go ahead and look at what we got. 
Okay, and the test showed that uh, it pulled 208.36 watt hours. And that's actually pretty respectable because uh, it says that it has 240 watt hour capacity. So that gives us an efficiency of about 87%. So I'm gonna go ahead and charge this back up and we'll do an AC capacity test. Okay, well, I just finished the AC test and let's see what we got for our results. And it shows 230 watt hours. Now that's really good because 230 watt hours out of a 240 watt hour pack, that's like almost 97% efficient. That's like 96.8. Uh, so that's really impressive. That's amazing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna take this outside with a 100 watt solar panel with it being completely dead just to make sure that it can start up um, from zero on a solar panel. All right, well, I had the juice go all charged back up to 100%. Um, it was pretty cloudy uh, going on into the day when I had that solar panel out. So it only charged it up to like 40%, but it worked pretty well for that 100 watt solar panel in February. So in the winter time, not bad. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and do some uh, high, high amperage testing, I guess you could say. We're gonna go ahead and put in a 200 watt heater on the AC side to see what it does because this is only rated for 150 watts. And then we're gonna do some stuff with these ports over here to see if we can overload those as well to, just to see what will happen. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but it does show that it is 121.8 volts coming out of this unit, so that's really good. Okay, and I have my 200 watt heater plugged in. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. Ramping up 168, 187, 202, 240, 250, 260, and it stopped. It got all the way up to 264, 264 watts. That's pretty good. And now on the screen, you can see that it reads, uh, it reads, uh, you know, that exclamation symbol or the triangle and it says 62 and if you look in the manual you'll see that under air codes number 62 says overload and short circuit protection for AC output and I just and I did want to confirm that in the manual it does say that the maximum AC output is 150 watts so this thing going over like that uh, that's pretty impressive before it sh before it shuts off Okay, and to get rid of this air code, I'm guessing all you have to do is turn it off and turn it back on. And that did do the trick. All right, the next thing we're gonna test is the cigarette lighter adapter. It says that it can do 12 volts at 10 amps, so that's 120 watts. So we're gonna go ahead and use this uh, battery tester right here. And we're gonna go ahead and push that 10 amps and then push it over to see how far it'll go before it shuts off. So let's start. Okay, let's go ahead and get it up to 10 amps. We got 10 amps right there, so let's go ahead and push it up to 11 amps. Okay, 11, one, 12 amps. And it shut off. So the Juice Go does shut off right at around 12 amps. And again on the screen, it shows that exclamation point and then it shows air code 42, which in the manual it does say overcurrent protection for cigarette lighter adapter. Okay, now I am uh, <clears throat> charging this unit up using the Blue Eddy EB3A. It's got a 100 watt output for a, a USB-C port. And we are importing it right here and it is, and it's inputting 90 watts. So out of 100 watts, I would say that's pretty good for a 100 watt power delivery. But I found out if I unplug it and I plug it into something that will input 100 watts, for some reason this 100 watt, uh, this 100 watt USB-C port is only delivering nine watts into this other power station, which can also accept 100 watts of power. But if I push it out of here and I plug it into C2, which is a 30 watt output, you can see that it goes right up to, you know, 29 watts of output from this second port. So I'm not sure why this one doesn't like to output uh, more than you know nine or ten watts, this one seems to work fine, and uh, 
the USB-A seems to work fine as well. And actually the USB-A is only outputting at 11 watts. But it could be the other power station isn't accepting the correct amount of voltage, something along those lines. Okay, so what do I think of the Juice Go by Bouge RV? You know what, I like this little thing. It's very easy to handle. Uh, this nice strap right here and these, these, rubber, uh, these rubber sides make it so it's very easy to, to maneuver. I mean, you can just pick this thing up and it's only what, like six or seven pounds? So again, very easy to just move around. Um, when it comes to efficiency, it was pretty good, especially on the AC side. I think we got like 95%, I can't even remember. But I wanna say out of the 240 watt hours, it gave us 230, which is crazy. Um, the display is very small, but very clear. And I like how it gives you the air codes of if something went wrong. And then if it did air out, all you gotta do is just turn the unit off and turn it back on and it clears everything out. I do like the fact that it has more USB-C ports than USB-A. Um, I feel like that is going to be more of a trend uh, going into the future. And also that this is a power delivery so you can actually charge it through the USB-C port. Um, I wasn't able to pull out uh, 100 watts. I mean, I was only able to pour out, pull out like nine watts out of this, but all the other ports seem to work just like they should. The, the, the DC side, you could actually pull like almost 12 amps out of this uh, cigarette lighter port before it aired out. And on the AC side, I actually got up to like 260 watts, which this is only rated for 150 watts. So that's pretty good too. So overall, I like this thing. If you have any questions about the uh, Juice Go by Bouge RV, please leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this in my description uh, if you want to look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.